Hey, I built out a prototype demo for a 3D SimCity fully simulating people and updated its graphics. Sure, but make it an always online live service platform. That way, we can add multiplayer, stop piracy, and we can sell more content on Origin. I don't think that's a good idea. Did I stutter? This is the story of how EA Corporate destroyed one man's opportunity to make his mark on a franchise that he had dedicated two decades of his life for, which led to the death of the SimCity franchise and paved the way for City Skylines. The fundamental clash of vision between EA Corporate and Ocean Quigley unseating SimCity from its throne over the city building genre. In 1986, Jeff Brown and Will Wright were chilling at a pizza party. Little did both know their chance encounter would change gaming forever, spawning one of the most successful franchises in gaming history. Together, they co-founded Maxis Studios to publish the SimCity game. And together, over the next few decades, they iterated on its formula. Each entry honing the previous features of the last one and introducing more features such as waste management, agriculture and zoning. In 1997, Maxis was eventually sold to EA, laying off half its workforce through the deal and Jeff Brown exiting the company. It was in the aftermath of this period that the series arguably reached its zenith. SimCity 4, released in 2003, was and still is the apex of the series. It is in this game that the mechanics of previously successful entries into the SimCity franchise were honed and polished, on top of a leap in graphical fidelity with visualization in a 3D engine in a sprite art style that looked absolutely stunning. With a difficulty curve that was simple to learn but difficult to master, requiring a player to constantly attend to previously developed areas to precariously balance newer expansions. The simple and clean UI with flares of comedy from funny newspaper titles and Sims having a full on meltdown made it the city builder of its time. For a 20 year old game, its staying power has been remarkable with a sizable number of people continuing to play it to this day. After the success of SimCity 4, Will Wright left Maxis in 2009 after the release of Spore, bookmarking the end of the founder's era for Maxis. Arguably, the magic that had once existed, the spark of creativity and drive to create better games for their audience at Maxis dimmed with his departure. During most of this time, Ocean Quigley was in the trenches with the founders, having worked with Will Wright on Maxis games since 1996. If there was ever a man, to help continue the vision of SimCity, it was him. Working in the art department for the SimCity titles, Ocean moved up the ranks slowly, progressing from cover box art to then animation art and finally becoming the art director for SimCity 4 and for Spore. With such intimate knowledge and involvement, there was no doubt that he would emulate the look and feel of SimCity under his leadership. Ocean was a man set to add to the legacy of the studio wanting desperately to create a beautiful looking SimCity, bringing it in line with modern graphical standards. He wanted the cities to be alive, simulating every single citizen, each having a home, job and personal commute. Unfortunately, he would find himself crushed by EA's financial and political machinations. The executives wanted a multiplayer based live service as a platform for selling future content to a wide base of players. The service would be housed on Origin, as corporate wanted players to migrate over from Steam to drive even more profits. Ocean attempted to walk this tightrope between honouring the legacy of SimCity and appeasing these executives. It is tragic then that these polarised visions could not survive in the same game, being completely antithetical to each other. The result was one of the most disastrous game launches in history. I remember a young gamer Mason finishing a hard day of being at university, coming home from listening to lectures and tutorials, instead of prepping for his exams, he wanted to play the new SimCity on launch day. I sat down in my chair, installed the game, and then... So it begins.
the server capacity for the new SimCity was just not up to scratch to handle the massive influx of players on launch day. This forced some to give up entirely on playing, or to wait 3 hours in a queue to play a game that they had paid for with their cold hard dollars. But this was not the worst of the problems. It was plagued by frequent disconnections, long loading times of cities, and crashes leading to the loss of saved games, which was a common occurrence. No, not rare, common. When people could finally get a good session in. This is what players found when they started playing. It was nothing short of horrifying. Players were greeted with the smallest of square plots to actively develop their city. Having different cities connecting with each other was a novel and interesting idea for the multiplayer concept. But cities only developing with the player being in an active game session meant that one city that had major crime problems that was not currently in active development would cause issues in another player's game. What's worse that if your region was open to the public, it could be griefed easily as people would purposely run their city into the ground financially and crime-wise. Don't even get started with the specializations. Originally envisioned as a way of making cities different from all the others, all it did was lock the player out of building the city, your city, in a certain way. Especially if there was already another one with that same specialization in the same region. Or god forbid, some player chose to specialize in non-renewable resources such as oil, which ran out in several real hours, forcing the player to import the resources from a magical global pool. There were many more small issues surrounding SimCity, they're too numerous to list here. You can check out the description down below for a whole roster on reddit of minor issues that just bury the game. With the release of SimCity, the calls for offline mode were immediate. Players wanted clarification as to why an online connection was always required. EA remained steadfast in its reasoning, stating that the game required an online connection as the servers took on the load of simulating the city, helping to offset the load put on people's personal computers. This was all bullshit. Evidence started stacking quickly on how offline was actually possible. And this all came to a head when the man, myth and legend, Azza, modded SimCity to run offline. A Kotaku editor, Stefan Tortillo, found that he could play offline for almost 20 minutes before triggering some sort of arbitrary code that forced him out of the game. Rock Paper Shotgun confirmed with a double agent inside Maxis that the servers were unnecessary in simulating the city. Their primary use was anti-piracy, and the extent to which they helped your game was to contact the server and ask if there was spare power or water in the region, and if so, the server allowed the player to buy it for their active city session. After this embarrassment, EA would remain silent for an entire year and then quietly introduced their vaunted new single player mode update and by then it was too late there was virtually no one left playing SimCity. What did Ocean have to say about the game's launch? Ocean was still proud of the game that he and his team had designed and built. The greatest tragedy was that in the initial months after release, Maxis Emeryville spent all of their productive time on fixing server issues, sucking away their attention from realizing his vision of the game. He stated that one of his eventual goals was to allow players to build anywhere within the entire 32 by 32 kilometer region. But the disastrous launch took its emotional toll. Four months after the game released, Ocean left Maxis, ending his 18 year stint at the company, later adding that the launch window was the hardest part of his career. In the end, Following the failure and widespread panning of the game, only one DLC was ever released, Cities of Tomorrow. The main Emu Reveal studio was then retasked to work on a mobile game, SimCity Build It, using assets developed from their 2013 game. It was hoped by corporate that these assets could be repurposed into something far more profitable. The game released in near record time on October 2015 only spending approximately one to two years in development. SimCity's failure, however, had to be blamed on someone. Maxis Emeryville, 
for their hard work and toil of building SimCity Build It after the frustrations that they had to deal with in regard to the survey issues of the 2013 SimCity. They were eventually rewarded with an execution. Without war, EA made the decision to shutter Maxis permanently, laying off a significant proportion of their personnel and folding key ones into other studios in other cities. The magic was gone for good. By the way, if you've enjoyed the story so far of how EA has screwed over Maxis, be sure to subscribe for more video essays about various gaming topics. From the death of SimCity, a small seedling developer that was inspired by SimCity itself, Colossal Studios had the space now to grow, creating city skylines from the things they had learned with their other titles such as Cities in Motion. Now they were on the verge of defroning SimCity of what once was an unassailable legacy. But what about Ocean? Reflecting on the franchise, he felt reassured that City Skylines had picked up the mantle of what he had been unable to build, stating that. The ideas, you don't own ideas, right? Like you, you basically you make something and you put it out there and then uh, people uh, pick it up and if they like it, they do more stuff with it themselves. Now, as a sequel to City Skylines is on the horizon, we can take the time to reflect on the SimCity 2013 saga. It was clear that EA's focus on forcing multiplayer onto a single player dominated genre with underprepared server infrastructure was responsible for killing the beloved franchise. However, as a testament to the magic of SimCity, SimCity 4 still has people regarding it as the best city sim ever. One day, perhaps, it can rise again from the dead and reclaim its throne once again. If you like this video about the legendary city builder franchise, to check out my other video about how Frostpunk has changed the city sim genre forever by strongly incorporating storytelling narratives into city sim games.